not just up and down, 90 degrees. We can turn at the hips. We can bend over at the hips. Possibly to pick things up if need be. We can take the bear. We can take the load of, say, for example, this torque multiplier that's about 60 pounds. We can lift it, hook it up, clutch out, which both of us just did. And actually, the robot likes that better because it uses less power and it just pumps its actuators. Think of an exoskeleton. Think of a human almost. You get bones on the outside that provide structure. You have muscles that are actuators, either pneumatic, electric, or hydraulic. These are electric motors. You have a wiring harness that makes everything talk. And then at the end of your nerves, you have sensors. So you're effectively putting a robot on the outside of the human so it can mimic transparently with movement what the human wants to do and is doing. I'm going to do a quick task. When you think about Delta, um, think about the backbone of their success. That's the population, their workforce that works hard every day. And a lot of that piece, a lot of that workforce is down at the ground level below the wing. They do a lot of real hard work. A lot of it involves physically demanding activities. Over here on my right, we have the notional mock-up of a jet engine. There's a torque multiplier on the ground. That's a 60 pound uh, tool. Normally 60 pounds uh, by design, that's a two person lift. So you'd have to lift it up, put it on a shaft, loosen up a nut that's keeping those fan blades on, and then take the nut off. The goal or the objective of this task, this maintenance task, is to remove the fan blades, put them on a rack, so an engineer can come by, pull the fan blade, do the diagnostics, make sure it still has its integrity, and then we can put it back on. This is routine maintenance. Happens all the time. If I alone decide to pick that 60 pound torque multiplier up every day and I do it for a week, two weeks, two months, two years, ten years, it's probably going to hurt my back. That's why it's a two man lift. But with this, the Guardian XL will do all the work for the person. So if the person comes in healthy and fresh from day one and start growing, moving 60 pound weights comfortably and safely and can do it for 10 or 20 years without harm or injury. So this is about free risk reduction, injury reduction. This isn't about speed. It's about slow and smooth, smooth and smooth, appropriate and efficient and effective. Think of it, at the end of the day, we're putting a human inside a robot. We're taking the human intelligence, instinct, and judgment. We're coupling that, combining it with the robot's strength, endurance, and precision. And what you get is a safe work environment and effective and productive. Right. So, I'm going to move over. Fletch is going to hang out for a little bit. Maybe he'll do a little dance to keep you uh, amused. <laughs> I'm going to turn to the right. I'm going to lift that torque multiplier. I'm going to do it with one arm. Then I'm going to mount it on the shaft. Then I'm going to notionally remove the nut. So, torque multiplier up in the air, in place. quick, it was easy. Now what's really neat is after I did the heavy task, the robot did all the work, I'm going to lock my arms out. Now I have workspace for a more dexterous task, one that doesn't require the strength and position of the robot. I'm just going to grab the ratchet, I'm going to simulate loosening the nut that is notionally holding on the fan blades. I got that loose, now I'm going to remove the torque multiplier again, I'm going to engage the clutch for the arms. Bring it back in place. And remove the torque multiplier. One arm. Step over. Carefully put it down. The heavy part's done. Lock my arms again. I've removed the nut. Now we remove the fan blades. Just step over my right. Put it in the holder, and I'll continue that for as long as necessary to either re uh, replace or remove completely all the fan blades that are in this engine so they can do the diagnostics on them to maintain that regular maintenance cycle, however often it is. And that's the task. Key things to take away there is robot did all the work for me. I didn't need to be strong. The robot lifted it, put it in place. I could lock out my time. I could do my hand, use my hands for a more dexterous task. One thing I didn't know before that is uh, notable for everyone.
UMC. What we have up in the front, these are called end effectors. These are basically tools. This is what I would call is just a multi-use utility tool, end effector. It can serve a number of purposes. If you saw closely when I picked it up, I just put a single bar underneath there. I hooked it. It's actually got a handle. The end effectors to my rear that kind of look like fingers might have been a better tool because it probably would have provided a more stable base for me to pick it up and put it in. So it's all about the end effector, it's all about the tool, and I think we'll get that kind of feedback on what tools are necessary for the desired task at hand. Let's make it most safe, most efficient. And now we'll come for the workforce. So thank you, Jim. Uh, so now we're gonna let Jim uh, rest for a moment. I'm gonna talk for Fletcher since we don't have a mic for him. I will say that uh, Fletcher has now become uh, an expert at management, uh, watching Jim do his work there. <laughs> but uh, so uh, Fletcher is now uh, we talked a little bit about end effectors. Notice we're both using the multi-purpose tool. Um, over here we do have, you can see what look like two robot hands. Uh, those are end effectors that can be swapped in. For these tasks, we found that these multi-purpose tools have been the best. Uh, Fletcher will walk over and grab and show you these end effectors. So it has two fingers. We're allowed to, we're able to position those uh, to do different tasks. Uh, these are the end effectors that we would use, let's say, if we were lifting some of the luggage, uh, which is uh, one of our normal demos. So now he has a tool, he can get in and get a, a different base on whatever it is that he's lifting. He'll shift back now, uh, where he's going to now show us and demonstrate uh, part of the lifting capability of this robot. So this tire here weighs 130 pounds. Normally this is a multi-person lift to be able to lift this back up uh, if we had been doing maintenance uh, onto uh, the aircraft. Uh, so Fletcher, watch quickly. He'll get in there, he'll get in with those end effectors, he'll lift this up quickly and place it onto the shaft. You see 130 pound lift, not breaking sweat. He's able to get it on there. He's able to dexterously move back. Now as Jim demonstrated over here, if he needed to, he could lock out. He could use his own hands to help place a nut on the wheel, help better position or align the wheel as it's on there. So he has all of those capabilities while he's doing that. Uh, so that's the, the tire lift. Um, now what we're gonna have uh, both of them do for you is uh, actually demonstrate a little bit of the uh, mobility. We'll let him get lined up here. Uh, get your cameras going. Uh, Fletch is, uh, was up on the stage earlier. We won't do all of his dance moves that he did in the keynote, but together they're going to walk through and thankfully I'm not going to sing. We'll just have to imagine your own music. Show us some of the mobility that you got there in that robot. All right, so first we'll probably start with a little bit of, a little bit of the shake of the old rope area. <laughs> make sure you can see how much we can move around comfortably. Might involve our arms at some point. Come straight up, come now. Shift it to a side, shift it to a side, step it up, step it up. He's going to kick his legs out because he likes to. <laughs> and we're just going to get our groove on here just a little bit. But this is comfortable. Just so do you want to see him shake the tail feathers? <laughs> <laughs> and then the final turn. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, just to demonstrate the nice black pads that we got back there to keep us safe. So these are their five mile an hour bumpers. So if the robots were to go down, they were able to sit down comfortably on those and get out of the robot if they had to. All right, so um, that's our, our demonstration. Can we get a round of applause for our two operators and the silliness that we're doing up here? Thank you. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're just going to go through a multi-docking uh, exercise here. Uh, Fletch is going to bring this tire back down so that our colleagues don't have to lift a 130-pound tire. We're going to dock Fletch, and then we'll dock Jim. So as Fletcher is just coming back, he's, uh, as you see, walk in. Uh, this is uh, what we call the exopod. This is the docking station. The this is where we're able to safely dock the robot. Uh, it also allows us to charge the batteries. It's a data center, an analysis center for the robot as well. Uh, it also serves as a shipping platform. So we have a standard uh, pallet size down below. We can box it up and ship these out to customers. So if you look around, you'll see uh, um, all of us wearing uh, the Delta Keep Climbing uh, t-shirts. If you have any questions about the Guardian XO, 